What's up? This is Combat Mission Cold War. It's the, uh, the name of the mission that we're playing is Between Two Farabonds. We're playing as the U.S. fighting against the Soviets. Go ahead and get into the op order. So the situation. It's 22 March 1979. It's 8.15 in the morning. The weather's cool, overcast, and damp with light rain. There's a light wind going towards the north. Our enemy is going to be the Soviet Eighth Guards Army, They're pushing southwest. It appears that their objective is the U.S. Seventh Corps headquarters at Stuttgart, Germany. So the mission, what are we doing? Fear of weapons of mass destruction attack dictates that American forces employ a dispersed defense in depth. You've arrived at a position in Defilade along Bundesstrasse 2, which is a highway. Two kilometers to your east, the Soviets have overrun Alpha Company's forward line, which is straddling Bundesstrasse 1 the other highway. Our mission is to dissuade them from advancing any further. So friendly forces, what are we working with? Well, you are third tank platoon, M60A2s, out of Charlie Company, Mech Infantry, Task Force Smith. We are accompanied by second rifle platoon and reduced red eye man pad platoon, which is AA. Fire support team has established contact with the battalion 155 millimeter howitzers. Headquarters is rushing forward anti-tank assets, which should arrive in about 20 minutes. You do not have great confidence in your M60A2s, uh, kind of older, shittier tanks, and in a lot of ways they're outpaced by the Soviet T-72s. HQ has been hesitant about committing them to combat, and the civilian contrast contractors tasked with keeping the finicky beasts operational have all fled the combat zone, which is not surprising. Um, enemy forces. Who are we fighting against? We face uh, units of the 27th Independent Tank Battalion, 27th Guards Motorized Rifle Division. And after exhausting themselves, breaking through a succession of defensive lines, they have brought forward a fresh tank company. This is our first encounter with the T-72 main battle tank. The Russians' earlier clash with Alpha Company has stripped them of much of their infantry support. U.S. counter-battery fire has neutered their tube artillery, but mortars and artillery rockets remain a threat. They are implying light ECM jamming, which has little effect. It's electronic countermeasures. Fucks up radios and shit. Um, so the plan. Hold back the Soviets with what you've got. Pretty fucking simple. So let's take a closer look at our force composition. Um, we have a component of Task Force Smith. The main component of our task force is 3rd Platoon of Charlie Company. It's a tank platoon of five M60A2 Patton tanks. This is a second generation main battle tank. Um, it's not as capable as the M1 Abrams, but it's better than the M48 Patton, which is also in this game. Um, its main armament is a 152 millimeter cannon. Uh, that is capable of firing HE, heat, and one thing that's kind of unique about it is that it fires the Shalele anti-tank guided missile out of the cannon. Um, that was a stopgap measure uh, because towards this point in the war, the Soviet tanks, they had better guns that could outrange us, and our way of closing that gap was by utilizing anti-tank guided missiles. It also has a coaxial 7.62 millimeter machine gun and a cupola mounted 50 cal machine gun. It has a diesel engine, um, a crew of four. It's got a commander, gunner, loader, and a driver. So that's third platoon, Charlie Company, five M60A2 Patton tanks. Supporting third platoon is going to be a mechanized. Infantry platoon loaded up in M113s. Um, the M113 is an armored personnel carrier. Uh, it's not an IFV. It, it's not meant to uh, support the infantry in a fight. It's more of a battle taxi. Uh, its main purpose is to get the infantry to the fight and transport them out of the fight. It's to move them around. Uh, they're lightly armored and lightly armed. Um, they really can't withstand much. Um, they do have a 50 caliber machine gun mounted on top of them, but you really want to keep these things out of the fight. Um, 
Our infantry platoon is armed with M16s, M203 grenade launchers, uh, M60 machine guns, um, as well as a Dragon launcher, which is a older anti-tank guided missile. It's not as capable as like the Javelin or anything like that. Uh, it was known for being pretty fucking unreliable, and it's kind of a piece of shit. Um, but, you know, at this point in the war, that's what the dudes had. So in this game, that's what they have. Uh, it's going to be three squads. Um, you got your command team with the lieutenant. And we also have a forward observer team attached to this infantry platoon. The third component of Task Force Smith is a man plaids platoon from the headquarters company. Uh, they're equipped with FIM-43 Red Eye Man Portable Service to Air Missile Systems, or just Man Pads for short. Um, the Red Eye is it was designed in the 1950s as an uh, infantry air defense weapon. Uh, it's pretty much the first replacement for machine guns, uh, because previous to this, machine guns were pretty much what was used to take down enemy aircraft. Um, they're pretty uh, useless against fast-moving aircraft. Um, but again, that's what they got. They're riding around in Jeeps. Yep. Jeeps. Um, there's three AA teams and three Jeeps and a headquarters team. Uh, another component that we're going to have is fourth platoon, Charlie company. It's from the weapons platoon. It's an anti-tank platoon. Uh, they're loaded up in M113 carriers, equipped with 152mm anti-tank guided missile systems, the TOW. Um, has a crew of four, commander, gunner, loader, and a driver. Um, they should be arriving in, I believe, 20 minutes. Um, there'll be two of them and a headquarters element in a multi-purpose vehicle or a jeep. No, we also have a section of 155 millimeter howitzers, self-propelled howitzers, uh, the M109A3. Um, they're 155 millimeter. Um, and we have a section of three of them that are going to act as fire support during this mission. And that is our complete force composition. That's everything we have. Um, the tank platoon, Mechanized infantry platoon, an AA man pad platoon. Um, we're receiving reinforcements from the anti tank platoon in about 20 minutes. And then we also have the section of 155 millimeter howitzers for indirect fire support. So that's my plan. How am I going to tackle this? Well, it's a pretty uh, simple plan. I've got a linear defense. I've got three lines. You can see them in green. Um, in the center, I've got my infantry platoon. A little bundled up, but they're not going to do much good um, dispersed amongst, amongst the tanks. Um, I've got my forward observer team up in the third story of that central building. And I've got two uh, fire teams with the dragon launchers on the third floor as well. Um, I am holding two squads in reserve. They're going to stay in the 113s um, because I am expecting um, heavy artillery fire before the Soviet advance. Um, it's one thing they're known for. They shell the fuck out of you before they push you, uh, and they keep shelling you pretty much. So they're going to be safer in those 113s probably than they will be in the buildings. But I need guys in the buildings, and my fort observers need to be able to see so they can call for artillery. So you can see my first line, second line, and third line in green. The second line is a ditch on the other side of the highway, Bundesrasse 2, which is what we're protecting. And behind that, uh, there's high ground, um, which this is going to be the third line of defense, um, but it's uphill. So if I have to fall back, um, I'm going to get shot up going up the hill. Um, but the anti-tank guided platoon, uh, this is where I'm going to put them up on the high ground where they can overwatch the entire area. The red shape that you see is my engagement zone. That's where I plan on killing the enemy. 
Um, that's where I want to funnel him. Uh, and that's where I want to really just start shooting the fuck out of him, really. Um, the purple zone that you see is a group of buildings and forests. There's a lot of dead zone on the other side that I, I can't put fires onto. Um, and I also don't want the enemy to occupy it with their infantry or their reconnaissance teams. So I'm going to call in a harassing fire mission. It's going to be the uh, section of 155 millimeters are going to uh, provide harassing fire um, just for terrain denial. I don't want the enemy to occupy that. Um, and hopefully I can funnel the enemy tanks uh, to the right of it into my kill zone where I can really uh, start laying the scunion on them. And well, that's, that's my plan. It's pretty fucking simple, um, but I don't have a whole lot of room for maneuver. Um, this is a pretty constrained uh, mission board, and so that's the plan I'm going with. So right off the bat, I start moving my M60s up to the defilade and haul down positions. Immediately we start to hear enemy aircraft overhead. Um, that is followed shortly after by an intense artillery barrage, just as I was expecting. One of my anti-tank teams on the third floor of that central building uh, during the initial artillery barrage then takes a casualty from shrapnel. One of the shells explodes a little too close to the building, uh, wounding one of the guys. So I take my first casualty there. In the room immediately next to them, my forward observer team also takes two casualties from artillery fire. I was expecting a lot of casualties from the artillery early on, uh, but there's only so much you could do about that. I could have kept them in the 113s, but as I said before, I needed some guys up in that third floor to observe. My guys then immediately start to get eyes on the enemy reconnaissance elements. Their scouts are moving forward ahead of their tanks. My tank platoon then starts taking fire. Um, they can't tell where it's coming from. Um, it's either BMPs or T-72s, but they don't see any targets. So for now, they're just getting shot at. My harassing fire mission then starts to drop on that village area in the middle of the map. And the forward observer section moves to try and provide aid to the two guys in the room with them that were casualties as a result of the artillery fire. Doesn't take long for my guys to begin spotting enemy T-72s moving up. They're sitting at about a little over 2,000 meters away. Tanks continue to take shots from BMPs or T-72s. Um, uh, they haven't taken any casualties yet, but they're just sitting there getting pounded away at, uh, and they can't do a whole lot of anything. Uh, the optics on these patents are not that great. And so I begin pulling them back down uh, deeper into defilade so they can stop getting shot at, and maybe I'll plan on pulling them back up once the enemy tanks get a little bit closer. I do uh, periodically continue hearing enemy aircraft, um, but my man Pat's platoon doesn't have any eyes on him, doesn't take any shots on him. We do get eyes on the enemy scouts, however, moving into that area that I've placed the harassing fire mission on. My M60 platoon continues to take fire. Um, they have not fired a shot yet. They still don't have eyes on targets. 
and they're just still getting shot at and there's nothing they can do about it. The infantry, however, are able to spot the tanks. Um, they just can't pass the information on to the friendly tanks. So we're just watching them move up and shoot the fuck out of our friendly tanks. With uh, There's not much to be done about that at this point. Besides for pulling them deeper in the defilade so that they don't continue to be targets for these superior Soviet tanks. Finally, one of my AA teams is able to get a spot on enemy aircraft. It takes a fire, it takes a shot at them, and it does knock out an enemy aircraft. The enemy T-72s continue to move up, um, unmolested by my tanks. So the current situation is not going that great for me. The enemy reconnaissance elements have occupied that central zone despite my harassing fires. Uh, my tanks have not been able to find any targets or fire on the targets, and uh, the T-72s are starting to move up. I have been able to shoot down an enemy jet. Don't know what it is. But the enemy tanks continue to pour down fire on my haul down tanks. Finally, uh, one of my patents is able to spot an enemy T-72 and begins to return fire with Shalele missiles. And does end up scoring a hit, but no effect. does not take long for the Soviets to score first kill on one of my tanks. Uh, kills all four guys inside. And these Soviet tanks are really fucking me up right now. I am able to score a hit with the Shalele missile but it only causes one casualty inside the T-72 and it continues to fire on friendly forces. And this enemy T-72 just eats, I don't even know how many Shalele missiles, and it just keeps going. My tanks are able to finally get eyes on the enemy reconnaissance elements. And we even end up scoring a hit with a Shilele missile, taking out the enemy BMP. The situation continues to develop. And my tanks now begin returning pretty effective fire. Enemy aircraft continue to buzz overhead, um, but I'm not able to find them with my man pads platoon. Their platoon continues to exchange fire with the enemy T-72s, um, still at distances greater than 2,000 meters, um, but I'm really not able to inflict any heavy casualties on them yet. 
I've already lost a friendly tank, as you can see it blowing up in the background. I am finally able to knock out one of the enemy T-72s with a Shalele missile as it attempts to cross Bundesrass 1. And a second one on the enemy's right flank, also on Bundesrass 1, takes a Shalele missile to the flank, knocking it out. My tanks are still sitting here taking a beating. Um, I take three casualties on my friendly tank on my far right flank. Tank's still operational, but there's only one guy in it. Enemy tank ahead. One of my M6Cs is able to get a good shot on an enemy T-72 with a shillelay, um, taking it out. Yeah, you burn, you motherfucker. Burn, motherfucker. As the enemy tanks get closer, it becomes more of a fair fight, and uh, my patents start pouring a, a more effective fire onto the T-72s as they lose that range advantage against me. One T-72 uh, gets a little too close, advances a little too quickly. They're forced to dismount, and one of my patents begins mopping them up with the 50 cal. At this point, it's, it seems like the enemy's advance has halted, um, but it doesn't last long. Uh, very shortly, they, they continue to push in greater numbers. The enemy begins to pound me with uh, an artillery barrage again. And in the process, uh, one of my infantry squads I was held in reserve in one of the 113s takes catastrophic casualties. Six guys inside end up dying as a result of a direct hit from an artillery round. As the tanks continue to exchange fire, I then lose a, another tank to a T-72 shot. Kills two of the crew members. And the other two then quickly bail um, just before the Baton's ammunition explodes. At this point, the enemy artillery is really starting to fuck me up, um, especially my guys that are in the wooden buildings. Um, one round lands a little too close to one of my squads, and I take another casualty. So at this point, just like before, um, the situation is quickly deteriorating. Um, my guys are getting pretty fucked up. I am able to kill some of the Soviets, but the artillery is fucking intense, and they're, those T-72s are really fucking just fucking up my M60s. Enemy armor. 
Um, luckily, 20 minutes into the battle, my anti-tank platoon has showed up with their tow launchers. And from that high ground, behind my two main positions, they immediately start throwing in toes at the enemy T-72s. At this point, the enemy armor is within a thousand meters of my forward position. The main tree begin engaging with the dragon launchers. Unfortunately, dragon launchers fucking suck. And uh, the first missile just piles into the ground about 400 meters in front of my position. Um, but in the room next to him, there's another dragon launcher, and he's able to land a hit on a T-72. But it doesn't have much effect. But luckily, Vito's are a little bit more effective, and they end up taking out that T-72, but not before it takes out one of my M60s. And uh, from this point forward, the toes really start uh, laying down the scunion on the enemy T-72s from that high ground uh, to the rear of my position. But the toes can't stop the enemy artillery from causing another three casualties inside the central building. The enemy tanks really start to push at this point. Um, they're closing in within a thousand meters, but you know, the toes are really putting the, the hurt on them. As the enemy T-72s get closer, uh, my M60s start to land a lot more hits, but, you know, the M60s is just not up to par with the T-72. It's just not... Surprisingly, uh, one of my dragon launchers does manage to knock out a T-72. Um, the enemy is starting to move into that kill zone, um, and hopefully I can start whittling down his numbers, because it seems like they're bunching up in that kill zone. Which is great, because it's the only thing that has gone to plan so far. And as they bunch up in that engagement zone, in that kill sack, um, hopefully my toes can really put the hurt on them. And they do. As they move up to a haul down position, they fire their toes, they move back into defilade, reload, and they move back up to the defilade again and take out more T-72s. At this point in the battle, tow launchers really seem to be my most effective weapons. Um, as the enemy gets closer, I'm starting to suspect that they're going to start dismounting infantry. Um, and not only that, but I can get my dragon launchers, you know, on these vehicles as they get closer. And so I decide to move one of my infantry squads that's in reserve inside the 113s up into the barn on the right side of the compound. And from there, hopefully they can stop any infantry or they can uh, get some hits on these T-72s and BMPs as they move into uh, closer engagement ranges.
And shortly after occupying that building, uh, one of the Dragon Launchers is able to score a hit on a T-72, although um, doesn't have much effect. These M60s continue to let me down. Um, maybe I'm not using them correctly, but they just keep taking hits from T-72s. One of them takes a hit in the front, took three casualties. Um, but the toes are here, and they're really putting in work. One of the toes almost gets taken out by a T-72, uh, but luckily the wooden fence detonates the round prematurely. And then here comes the, the fucking artillery again. And that artillery um, ends up bringing uh, the building down on one of my squads. Yep, right on top of their fucking head. Brings the whole building down. Taking two casualties, surprisingly only two. My infantry up in the third floor of the central building uh, starts to spot infantry. And they start to engage with small arms fire. Not long after, an enemy BMP uh, makes a run for it and gets an angle on my 113s. Um, they very excitingly return fire uh, and then they haul ass in reverse. Those 113s would get fucked up by the BMP. Surprisingly, after having a building fall out on top of their head, uh, able to grab their composure and take out a BMP-2 with the Dragon, and my anti-tank platoon just continues to just put in work. At this point in the battle, um, things still aren't going that great, um, but I am starting to produce more results as the enemy gets closer, uh, primarily through the use of my anti-tank platoon. Um, the toes just continue to knock the enemy armor out. It's, it's especially considering I have an entire tank platoon that hasn't really achieved much of anything at this point. Toes continue to put in where they continue to knock out T-72s, but there's only two of them, and uh, eventually the tanks start to get within 100 meters of my forward position. And uh, with that, I start pulling back any personnel that I have alive uh, to my second defensive position in the ditch on the underside of Bundesstrasse 1.
So at this point, um, my first line of defense is pretty much gone. I pulled everybody back to my second line of defense. I, I do still have infantry in the central buildings, um, but mainly that's because I'm not going to be able to pull them back without them getting shot to shit. And at this point, things are really starting to uh, deteriorate very quickly. Um, my toes are running out of missiles. Uh, one of them at this point only has two missiles left, the other one only has three. And all of my tanks are down. Okay. One T-72 just bursts through my first line and 113s do what they can with their 50 cows, but really it's fucking useless. 50 cal is not going to do much to a tank. It might knock out the optics, it might fuck up the tracks, but besides for that, it's not going to do much of anything. And then, shortly after that, my poor Jeep. My poor Jeep. My poor 113. And with his last missile, um, my toe is able to save the day and take out that tank. Forcing the one surviving crew member to quickly dismount. Um, and he attempts to run away, but very shortly he's cut down by an M16 by one of the infantry in the ditch. And at this point, I've pretty much stopped the Soviet advance. Um, they really don't have much left. The, the toes have just fucked them up. Uh, my man pads do start to spot more aircraft, um, and they do get a kill, knocking down one of the Russian jets. And at that point, I get the victory screen. Um, 22 men killed, 12 wounded. I lost all my tanks. Um, I lost an armored vehicle, a Jeep. Um, but on the other side, the Soviets, they, they've lost 33 men killed, um, eight wounded. And they lost 10 tanks and four BMPs. And also they've lost two aircraft. They have failed to accomplish their ground targets They've failed to accomplish um, their casualty objectives. Um, they didn't uh, cause as many casualties on me as they needed. Um, they didn't. They didn't take the ground that they were supposed to, and um, I was able to inflict heavy casualties on them and hold on to the ground. Uh, and so that, in the end, ended up giving me a major victory. Um, with a Soviet surrender. Um, so what could have I have done better? Um, I bunched my guys up a little bit in the center. Um, I might have been able to take a lot of those infantry and keep them in the 113s. Um, maybe my tanks could have been in a better defilade position, but there really wasn't many other places to put them. Um, I definitely could not have reversed them up the high ground behind me. It would have taken too many shots in doing so. Um, so yeah, spread guys out. Keep them in armored personnel carriers. Houses are not going to protect them. And uh, thank God for toes. Um, I've, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, it's my first one like this. Uh, I did it without a script. I'm going to make more. They're going to get better. Um, but if you watch the video, thank you. Thank you.